So my name is Bob Stelnack, and I'm actually a, a cadet fourth class, so a fourth degree at the academy. That's a freshman. I'm from Wayne, New Jersey, so it's in like Northeast Jersey. So I graduated from Wayne Valley High School, and uh, that was right next to Wayne Hills High School, so we had two high schools in my town. Yeah, I liked it there, very diverse place. Classes were good, you know, I had access to any sort of academics I wanted, you know, if I wanted to take the real easy route, I could have done that. If I wanted to take like more AP classes, I had most of those opportunities available. And the teachers were, you know, generally uh, pretty involved in the students if you wanted it to be that way. So I think academics were good there. So I came from a pretty interesting uh, family life, you know. Uh, I love my family, like all the way through. Of course, I have a family and a step family, you know, I consider it one family. Going through high school, things weren't always the most normal in my household, and sometimes they weren't always the best. But I always say that you should get the best out of whatever situation you're in. So if there are lots of challenges and sort of like I was working through high school, it's kind of important to just say, okay, well, I've already like juggled all these things. You know, this is gonna help me in the future, maybe at the academy, where I will have lots of things to juggle, and at least I've already had practice at that. We had a Marine ROTC guy in school and he was just like going to everyone he was like hey you need to join you need to get it. here's some uh, like lanyards and some stickers and I was like wow like maybe I should look at the military you know I mean I don't really want the normal college experience I mean that seems pretty cool uh, and then I looked at Marine ROTC and said well maybe if I'm doing Marines I could just do Army and then I looked at Army and said well I could do ROTC or I could look at the better stuff well what if I want to be an engineer and then I found the Air Force Academy finally I was like oh okay so I applied at like the last possible minute to the Air Force Academy I remember being super excited like my junior year and waiting for the application to open and I opened it immediately and then I didn't finish until like the last possible uh, day. He was really helpful, you know, any questions I had he was able to answer, but I wasn't really able to meet with him that much and I didn't have that many uh, interactions with him. So it was kind of like he told me what I needed to do and then I sort of did that and when I was finished like, hey, you know, I, I got it a year later. <laughs> My stepmother really wanted to come out. She was like, oh, you know, she goes to Portland and stuff. And then we were like, you know, to fly like everyone across the country is really expensive. So I actually just came here on my own. And uh, we found this really neat program called the Bed and Breakfast Program or a Bed and Breakfast Sponsor. And uh, they basically took me in for the night and just like, hey, you can sleep here. And then tomorrow we'll drive you to the academy. So I did that. As soon as I got to the beginning of improsing, there was a kid next to me, and this was like my first lesson, and he said, oh, hey, make sure you take your cleats out and you carry those, because, you know, they don't want you to have it in his bag. And he was doing the same thing, and I was like, oh, well, you know, I guess this is the time, you know, be a team and stuff, you know, I'm ready to learn. And so I took my cleats out, and I tied them and put it on my neck, and like, just hang them right here. And uh, as soon as I got on the bus, I realized, oh my god, this is not where they're supposed to be. So before the guy starts yelling, I'm like trying to very slowly like sneak these back into my bag. So I thought it was kind of surreal. You know, I'd seen the videos of people being on the bus and whatnot. And when I finally got on the bus, they were yelling. I wasn't even paying attention, which didn't pay off because as soon as you get off the bus, they start asking you stuff about what they said. And I was like, what? <laughs> like you were talking? They're just yelling, you know, like they can't actually do anything to you. They're just being really loud. So if you can deal with loud noises, you can sort of phase that stuff out. I mean, maybe it's good to listen to what they're saying, but most of the time, you know, if you want to keep your, your cool together, just sort of phase it out. I declared comp sci, then I declared biology, and then I was planning on declaring uh, economics, and I ended up back in comp sci. Most people sort of look at them, and they don't really declare, and I was like, no, I love this, I'm going to declare that. And then I was like, oh, wait, but I love this instead. Um, I was just interested in a lot of things, and it's really tough freshman year, no doubt about that. You go through a lot of tough stuff. I thought it was four years of that, so my first unexpected thing was being said, hey, the next three years, you can go ahead and do whatever you want. And that was just like the, the door that opened for me when they said, like, you can go ahead and use your time. You can work with the community if you want. You can uh, start working on your flying skills, either working on getting your private pilot's license or in soaring where you just take a glider up in the air. You can become an instructor. For almost anything you do at the academy, we have instructors for working with our satellites, instructors for flying, jump masters, like, you name it, you are going to have a cadet teaching you how to do it. So you just gotta find whatever it is you're interested in out of anything, the academy's gonna offer it and if you really stick to it, in two years you're gonna be teaching that to the next person who's interested in it. You can do anything in athletics, uh, airmanship, anything with science and math, even research projects. Most recently actually I got to go to San Diego um, to learn some stuff for cyber warfare. The cyber warfare lab here decided they want to teach some lieutenants how to do cyber warfare stuff, how to interact with that, and they sent me on a TDY trip to San Diego. I spent five days learning how to do reverse engineering in cyber warfare, and I spent a week, you know, living in San Diego. <laughs> Honestly, there are so many opportunities here, and there's so many different options you can go to. You really can find a spot that you want to focus in on and what you want to be good at. I mean, 
I don't know anyone who has come here and said, wow, they just don't offer a major that I'm not interested in. Like, no one's ever done that. You know, you come here and you can definitely find something that sort of fits whatever you want to do. I mean, we have a scheduled lifestyle, but there's definitely plenty of options if you're just going to look for them. I applied to the cyber warfare team and got a spot there. I'm uh, involved in the STEM club, which is kind of just an outreach program. Go to local high schools and teach kids about stuff like engineering and math. Um, and not really teach, but just sort of show them the cool side of stuff. And then uh, I was involved in the Cadet Space Satellite Operations Squadron for a while, which is just a fancy way of saying we work with the satellite we have here. And then uh, most recently I joined the powerlifting team. I don't know how that happened. Yeah, one day I was just like down at the gym and uh, the coach came over and was like, hey, have you ever considered powerlifting? And I was like, no. <laughs> like, why would I like consider that? But uh, yeah, he wanted me to do that, so. You know, I really came here because I was like, you know, become an officer, join the military, uh, work on things I wouldn't get to work on a normal college. That all seemed great. What made me stay here was just realizing how much stuff you don't know before you come to college and what kind of stuff this place can teach you, you know, about being a leader and dealing with challenges and just all sort of new things I never really thought I'd end up dealing with. You know, coming out of high school, you're on top of the world, you know, you just had a great time. And then you get here and it's like, wow, there are challenges I never expected to face. And uh, between the teamwork you learn here and the friends you make, it's just, it gives you so many new ways to figure out the rest of your life. And it just teaches you so many good things. So I kind of decided to stay here because I don't think I could go wrong. So sort of like my advice for someone who's about to apply or maybe apply, um, first off, I'd say apply. It's the best decision I've made in my entire life. I almost didn't, and uh, it, first off, you can't go wrong. It's gonna be a good time, a rough time sometimes, but it's gonna pay off no matter what. You just gotta power through it. You know, there's a lot of challenges you're gonna come up with in your life, and uh, that's going to start with the application process and just trying to get in this place, and it's all worth it in the end. Everything pays off. But just power through everything. You know, it's tough, and as long as you're dedicated to that, though, as long as you remember that in the end, it all pays off like a lot.